Everybody, Jason Davis here live at Kicking and Screening 2018 in New York City. I'm with Greg Lawless, Oliver uh, Parman, the directors of Kicking and Screening, right? Not film directors, we've obviously established that already. All right, guys, so I think 10 years in, first of all, talk about what that means, that it's been going on for 10 years. You guys have been able to get the movies and get people out to watch, get some filmmakers some exposure. Um, yeah, 10 years, uh, what does it mean? Uh, it, it means that uh, there's a community here in New York specifically, but also sort of even broader. I mean, you're coming up here from D.C. to, you know, from the, to, to care about this, that the whole soccer community out there cares about this and sees this as an opportunity to see really cool stories. Um, and that there are still filmmakers that continue to make it. Every year someone says, soccer films, I mean, how many can there really be? And I always say, you'd be surprised. Like this year, I think we looked at like 50 or 60 films before deciding on the ones that we'd end up showing. So I think it, it also is a testament that 10 years ago, we were one of two soccer film festivals in the world. And today we're one of uh, several dozen, I think, that wow. are now out there. I mean, I just got another email today from somebody in St. Gallen, Switzerland, that said, hey, we've got a soccer film festival. Can you help us find yeah. this film? So um, that's, I think, what 10 years is, just evolution and growth of the whole thing. So Oliver, how about the, the process for picking movies? How about we talk about that a little bit? Because well, our, 50 or 60 submissions sounds like a lot. I, I have to say our partner in crime, Rachel Marcus, uh -huh. is really the the, she's the one who really picks all the films. We watch them all. I think the process is we watch every film you know, that gets submitted and we think about kind of the audience and who's going to attend and um, really it's, it's a difficult choice sometimes and, um, but it's great. I think we've curated a great festival this year. So. And, and we also go find films, right? We go. The, it's yeah. not just that we get submissions, but we also we we did mention Rachel, who's uh, the other co-founder of this whole thing, and and she is this. Uh, she's like Sherlock Holmes of soccer films. She can find them, and she she can somehow get a hold of directors and producers in seconds. It's really amazing. Well, what's the mix on? Um, you know, there's a little bit of an American story. At least we're, we're on night two here. Messi and me is going to be a story about an American player who yep. got a chance to shine in a game. Lionel Messi played in, that's yeah. amazing. Uh, there are obviously international stories, so how do you deal with the, the mix of that, uh, especially in New York? Um, you know, I think that we always try to find the best films that we can that are gonna tell a good story that either mesh with a theme for the night. Um, so night one was really all about women's soccer, and, and uh, so we had this amazing film out of Sweden called Football for Better or Worse, and that matched with that. Uh, tonight, uh, as we were putting the night two together, we kept thinking about just style and playing with style and people thought about style and, and different styles as they came to life, which then led us to fashion. So we have a panel about fashion right. tonight as well. And, um, you know, those films where we're thinking about like American films versus not American films, we don't really care. Right. Although I will say that we have a subconscious that says we want an American film to come through to show the American soccer culture. Because, look, guys like you, guys like me, we've been in this for a very long time about soccer, trying to help grow the game itself. Mm -hmm. If we can show good stories that are American made and American based, that only helps all of that. Uh, at this point, um, you know, again, we're, we're, we're sitting here, we're ahead of the, the Messi and Me story, which is uh, Matt Eliasson and the, the bicycle kick I heard around the world. I don't know, how do you describe I, that? I, yeah, he, I don't know. His <laughs> trek to Iceland. And, yeah. you know, what I, I think that there's obviously a, it's a soccer story, but it's a human story. It's a guy chasing a dream, right? Yep. So let's talk yep. about sort of the universality of chasing a dream and how that comes through in soccer films. Yeah, you know, we've, we, throughout the years, I think we've shown some amazing films that, that really um, is following your dreams. I mean, we, we've shown films about players who started in the middle of the Midwest and have gone and played for the Premier League and ended up in the U.S. national team and just with their passion and drive, you know. Um, and we have shown a bunch of those films and they're great and they're inspiring and I think they really draw a great audience for us in New York. Right. So, yeah. there, There's an echo, I think. I mean, last night I'm sitting here and we, we watched the the football for better or for worse, which obviously is a story of, of women's football and the struggle. Mm -hmm. Christy Rampone is on the stage talking about her experience in the, in the NWSL and before that in professional soccer in the United States. Um, you obviously set up that panel to have to continue that discussion. Is that something that follows you guys through the, through the year? Or, I mean, do you get feedback on, on some of these stories that you tell from attendees or people that maybe hear about what's going on uh, that can become something bigger? Uh, potentially, you know, uh, one of the things we're trying to do is how do we give some of these little films that are being made a, a platform beyond just mm -hmm. this, right? So if, if there is this amazing film like Football for Better or Worse, 
it's being shown here. It's probably been shown in about 10 festivals around the world and, you know, got a little bit of play in Sweden. But beyond that, no one's right. seen this story. So how do we continue that story somewhere? So what we've been working with on the side is another side project, because, you know, we need as many of those as we can get. Um, of course. As you know. Of right? course. <laughs> um, is to set up a distribution arm as well. So okay. we've set up a company called Kicking and Screening Media Group that is trying to distribute these films via, you know, streaming platforms like whether it's iTunes or mm -hmm. Apple, or, I mean, um, Amazon or some things like that, or DVDs even on Amazon for some of these films, mm -hmm. and then theatrical. So we're working with people who are looking to show these films. Um, we have a film called Celtic Soul that we are distributing, mm -hmm. which showed in last year's festival. And we just got a call from a festival down in Mexico saying, hey, we want to show this film. Can we do that? So yeah, okay. we had the rights for it in Mexico from a distribution standpoint. Right. So you know, we helped them get the exposure for this little film that. Uh, that, that people should see because it's fun. Right. I mean, yeah, uh, we, we hear stories in the in the big time Hollywood sense. We hear stories. Oh, that that movie showed at Sundance, and they get a right. distribution deal. It's at, in Toronto. It gets yeah. a distribution deal. You guys are trying to take hold of that process a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, and, we, and there's a demand. I think every festival we show, people are always who can attend, always think of where where can we see these films. And I think we've started a company to d help facilitate that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we're not alone. Sundance has yeah. done it, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 We have their festival, Sundance, and they're yes. saying, yeah. "Oh, let's Absolutely. distribute that." Yeah. Yeah. Done this, yeah. Yeah. You know, so. you know it's, it's ten years, and and yep. technology has changed in ten years, and access, and you know, people's ability to put together quality product has changed. How how was that over ten years? How, what kind of difference have you seen in, in sort of the quality of the, the films that you're getting and how many there are, I guess? Um, I don't know if it's technology that's changing it, although I do think that t what technology has done has been able to allow filmmakers in some of the more random countries in the world yeah. to get their films or their message out that they have a film. You'd be amazed how many films we get from countries like in the Middle East. Uh, we've gotten a bunch of submissions from like Bangladesh where a guy has shot it on his phone, but right. more importantly, he's then been able to say, I have this film. I've gone and used technology, internet, social media, whatever it is, to say, I've got this really cool film. Will you show it? Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's where technology has helped more than anything is just to allow the communication to happen mm -hmm. that there is a film. Yeah. And the experimentation. I mean, you have people who've never, you know, aren't film directors but have a great story. And to Greg's point, grab an iPhone. Of course. Tell the story. Yeah. And they live in the middle of the Yeah, and, the, and the, the, um, the world's game spreads across all corners. Yeah. Um, sure does. At this point, I mean, it sort of dependent on what you get and your submissions and, and what able, Rachel's able to go dig up, is there anything that you guys are looking to do story-wise? You want to hear something? You want to maybe just a concept? I'd love to hear about... Soccer in India, for example, where it's a, a struggling sport amidst a much more... Randomly, know. like in the year two or three that we were doing this, we actually put on a festival in India, Okay, um, mm -hmm. which was totally mm -hmm. bizarre. It was actually helped by Simon Cooper, who wrote Soccer right. Soccernomics. Um, and he was like, hey, these guys want to do some soccer films. We said, okay. And we ended up going, uh, putting on a couple of nights in India. They were totally into it. There were like 500 people that showed up at this outdoor theater to see it all. Um, yeah, that would be an amazing story yeah, to right. tell about soccer in India. I think... I, I would love to see a story about the 1989 U.S. qualification ah, run, right? These yeah. basic kids right. that made this run and then went to Italy and tell that whole story, uh, you know, either as a narrative, right? Let's go find some actors that sure. can do it. Or just go back and find the footage because there is great footage. You get the shot heard around the world, yeah. um, which, you know, the world at that point was just America. Uh, I'm not sure many people outside of America really cared about that goal, but sure. they've come to. Can, can I, I mean, I, for, hey, for filmmakers, I guess? What would you make? I, yeah. I, I'm ready What's for the, the Freddie Adu documentary. I'm uh, ready for the full exploration of everything that happened yeah. with Freddie Adu. Freddie Adu would be yeah. a fascinating story. And yeah. if you could get him to participate as That's well, the it question, would be so right. key. And it might have to so. wait. He's not quite retired right. yet, playing He's out not. in Vegas, yes, doing his is. thing. Yeah, uh, although I, I didn't see him in the, in the team sheet the other day, so uh -oh. it's got maybe he's hurt. But it's replaced uh, by a llama, probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, Greg Lalas, uh, Oliver Parman, thank you so much, directors of Kicking and Screening. We're here at the 10th annual Kicking and Screening Film Festival in New York. Stick with Compass Football for more coverage.